Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, I was looking through some of my Lightroom videos and it turns out one of the videos I did a while back on cinematic uh, color toning was pretty popular. So what I thought I'd do is show you how I did some uh, cinematic color toning on one of my recent uh, street photos, you know, from my street photography and stuff to kind of take away some of the business of the image and kind of make the image look, I think, you know, a little bit more cinematic and a little more pleasing to the eyes. So let's hop in here to Lightroom and I'll show you just how I did this. Okay, everyone. Well, I want to show you how to actually do some cinematic color toning. Now, in one of my previous uh, you know, tutorials, I did a little bit more reds, a little bit darker blues. This one's going to be a little bit more lighter blue and a little bit more lighter orange. But I really think it helps eliminate all the business you see in this particular here uh, street photo. Now, my street photos, when I uh, do any kind of editing stuff, I normally don't remove much, if anything. At the most, after I do a lot of my global adjustments, I like to maybe do a little dodging and burning and controlling the vignette. That's about all I really do for my street photos because I have to give them a more of a natural look. Now, natural look can mean that it, it I don't really take away, but I will reduce the colors. That way people are not distracted by too many busy colors. So if we see here, this is the original photo I took. And here's what it looks like after I did my retouching. As you can see, it's very cinematic uh, night look. I really do like this one. I think everybody else will too. So let me just put it here into the develop module and I'll show you how I created this. Okay. Now if you've seen my other tutorials before, you know the first thing I like to do is I like to go down and turn on my lens corrections. Let's click on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. As we can see, the Sigma 18 to 35 art lens was detected, so we're good to go there. Now, I don't like the white balance because the camera automatically made things very yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on here, auto, and see where that takes us. And that actually changed it to a temperature of 2850 by a tint of zero, which is what I had before on my this uh, image before. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now let's pull up our exposure here. Let's go over here and just bring up the exposure. Just a 0 0.20, one fifth of a stop. And along with that, I'm going to bump up the contrast to a 5 here. And that should give us a very bright, little bit more contrast to the image. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of areas like this signs and stuff that are just really blown out. We want to recover that. Now to do that, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to pull down these highlights to about a negative 50. There we go. And see, that recovered a lot of that. Let's see if I just click on it before. And let's bring it back to negative 50 again. As you can see, works pretty good. And if you have trouble getting it just right, you just punch in the numbers like I normally do. Okay, now the shadows, we're going to bring up some of the shadows just a little bit here. And the shadows, I think I'm going to bring up to a plus 25. Yeah. It's just a little bit to help kind of even out the image a little more so there ain't a huge amount of really dark contrast. Even though this is a night photo taken in the rain, which you can kind of tell there is rain kind of falling up here and there's a lot of noise too. Now this was always shot at ISO 800, I believe. But, yeah, it was just ISO 800. But it was raining, and I haven't did any kind of noise reduction yet. And be honest with you, I kind of like the noise a little bit because it kind of gives it more of that film look. So we're not going to try to get rid of too much noise, and it might actually leave it. But that's up to your own personal taste. Now, to add some more micro contrast to this image, I'm going to actually pull up the clarity. So I'm going to go over here and take up the clarity. And I'm going to take this up to a plus 30 on this image. And I can see here, zoom out. You can see, we go back down, pull up clarity again to a plus 30. Yeah, that made the image a lot more cleaner, more defined. And kind of got rid of any of that maybe haze that you would got from the rain too much. Okay. Now, since we got a lot of color and stuff in this image, we want to reduce that. So I'm going to pull the saturation down to negative 10. And we just punch it in here, negative one zero. And that just reduces color just a little bit. 
to kind of, you know, because you don't want to have too much uh, color saturation when you're doing cinematic toning because you get too much, it distracts, and takes away from you actually adding any t uh, extra toning anyway. Okay. So, now we're going to do the tone curve here. And I'm just going to zoom in on this tone curve, and we're going to edit this first before we move on to that, you know, view it on the image and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a few points here. Let's add just one there, one here, one here, one here, and about one here. Now that is, should be, one, two, three, yeah, about five control points, if I'm not mistaken here. Now this one right here, the first one, I'm just going to bring up to 9%. And this one's what it's going to start doing is kind of take it away from where you can go on the the dark uh, the blacks and stuff. So it's going to make your blacks lighter. Let me see here. Having trouble with my mouse. <laughs> okay. Now the other one here, we're going to 14 by 16. See here, 14. Then get up to, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's close enough. Now, the next one we got here, so we're on 35. Yeah, it may have one too many control points. Let me delete that one. So, 35 by 36. That's close enough. <laughs> now this next one is going to be a 61 at 63%. Let's drag it over here just so we have 61. We're pretty close by 63. Yeah, bring it down. That's close enough. Then this other one here is 83 at 84%. And bring it down. That's close enough. And our last one here is a 100 at 95%. And that's close enough. And we should have a, you know, tone curve like this when you're done. I had to zoom out in case anybody's wondering because my mouse wasn't wanting to play too friendly with me for some reason. Okay, so once we got that done, that's our tone curve. Now I'll turn this on and off and you can see the difference that this makes. This adds that real kind of matte look to it, more cinematic, because you know a lot of the older uh, cinematic stock stuff you really don't crush too much because then it would look too oversaturated on the screen. And that really you know, makes it look pretty nice there. Now I'm gonna actually reduce some of my luminance and stuff. And let's go down here. And all I'm going to do is on my HSL is just adjust the luminance here. I'm going to go to a plus two. Then I'm going to leave the orange as a zero. The yellow, I'm going to go down to a negative seven. My greens, I am going to a negative 13. Aquas, I am going to a negative 20. Blues going negative 13 on that one. My purples going to a negative 10. And the magentas to a negative 9. And let me zoom back out. And I can turn that one on and off and we can see how that affected everything. You know, it's just minor, minor little details. But I think it adds a little bit more to it here. Makes it a little more, I don't know, I like it better. <laughs> Because a lot of colors and stuff, I think, are just too bright, too over. Uh, so I like to darken them down. Gives a little more depth to them. Now let's go over here to our split toning. And the split toning is what really, you know, adds the actual tone to this one. So let me just zoom in on this. And we can we got two ways of doing this. We can click on this and we can grab our first one here, which is going to be 
a hue of 40, it's right here, and a saturation of 16. So you can find 40 there if you want to, then you can just drag it 16 up to there, which is quite easy. Another way to do it, and of course the shadows here, I'm gonna, you can also just punch it in right here, which is normally a 225 is what I would do for blues and a saturation of 33. So you can punch it in there. And of course, when you see, you can see it automatically add it right here. Hue 225, saturation 33%. And if we zoom out, well, that's the wrong button, zoom, zoom out, we can turn that on and off. And we'll see that's where our, you know, our split toning to give it more of that cinematic look really comes into play. Okay. So now let's go down here to the detail. Now let's do a little sharpening. So I'm gonna go down through my preset to sharpening medium. Let's go ahead and click on that one. And that makes it look you know, pretty nice. So I can zoom in here and look at a few of these images and stuff. Turn that on and off. You can see that sharpening really brought back a lot. Now I said noise reduction, I'm just gonna leave it 10 because what little, uh. The noise I see in it just gives it more of a film look. Okay, now I'll just zoom in right quick because I know I don't everybody got the, my presets yet. But the sharpening is just a 50 on the amount, radius of 0.9, detail of 75, and a masking of 50. Of course, you always have to adjust the masking, but I'm just going to leave it as is for this one. So like I said, you get that uh, preset also when you go down and you download my presets down in the description below. Now, the last of the global adjustments, and this is actually, you know, fairly easy. All we're going to simply do here is a uh, post crop netting of negative 30. And we'll just see what that does. Takes those bright edges, kind of focus it down so you're seeing more of the center of the image. Kind of makes the outside of it less distracting. I like that. Now here's our only local adjustment, and we're going to use a radius, uh, radio filter here. And we can just reset it back to normal. Let's just take it here, and I'm going to draw a big radio filter. We want to cover pretty much from edge to edge. Just kind of centered up. About like that. Well, if I centered up correctly, that is. Okay, now for this one, I'm just going to simply bring up the whites to a plus 15. And I'll zoom in here right quick. You know, just bring that up to a 15 here. And we're done with that one. Click done. And yeah, not too bad. That just kind of brings up the whites just to make the little center of it a little more perkier. That's all the real, really doing. It kind of brings out the street lights and stuff more in the... the you know, the pavement and everything since it was raining and I'll click on it again and show you right quick I click on the right one here we go let me see if I take that away it kind of makes it a little duller in the center and if I bring up the whites it kind of makes the center just a little bit more peppier not much just a 15 there I think we might just add just a little bit to the exposure maybe a plus 10 and maybe let me see how that looks. You can play around with it, but that's probably it, about all we'll do right there. And just click done, and we're done with this image. Now we'll just pull a little bit before and after from the screen. So this is before, now after. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now, like I said, you can download my presets for free just down in the description below. Now, if you like this video, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, you know, please take time to subscribe. Subscribing is free. It's for you. and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone. Thank you for watching.